Mule the board game. M U L E. Mule. Which stands for multiple use labor element. Who would have guessed? I would have guessed it was mechanical. The answer for mechanical, but doesn't. It's multiple use labor element. Um, I've never played this computer game or video game, whatever it is it was based on. I had heard a lot about it as a kid. It's probably one of the few classic games that I've missed. Um, Yule is um, interesting. But I like licensed games. They just, I mean, I, I don't know. I kind of dig it. So I thought I would give this a try. What Mule is going to be? It's going to be an economic game that includes luck. Right. Economic game with luck, without a stock market. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say most people who enjoy economic games probably don't enjoy luck in the games. You don't want to do XYZ, plan out, and just have it wiped out by a car that just happened to be drawn that you really had no control of. Fair enough. But you know that if you have the most wealth, you'll be giving away the lucky card to somebody. And you know that if you're last, you'll be giving away the bad card. You can plan for that. Okay? You can plan for that. Now, we played a game, and I don't know if this is a fact or just how we felt, but... A lot of the cards targeted also the player who was second. Okay? So, you can plan for that. But, this is a game where you have to give up a little bit of control. And I was playing with somebody who was, I guess you could call a fan, Dylan, who had made some of our top uh, 10 lists. And he was like, that was the computer game. That's how it was. You would do this stuff, something would come along and wipe you out. Fair enough. But you just have to know that going in. This isn't going to be Kanban where you, everything you do is on your plan or Panamax where, you know, I guess you can be screwed over in Panamax by other people, but you have somewhat control. This isn't going to be the gallerist where everything you do is up to you. This, the board will fight back at times and it will be unjust to you. You have to be okay with that. Other than that, I really enjoyed uh, the components. I really enjoyed... The artwork in the game, uh, maybe I can just show you in the box here. It's like little silly alien art stuff, which is kind of cute and funny, and I don't know. I assume it's from the video game. Um, the game doesn't play like a video game, though. It plays like an economic game where you're getting land and uh, you're pulling resource out of it and you're making these decisions, and then sometimes you may spend some actions to look at everything, or sometimes you just flip them over and hope for the best. That's Mule, I guess. And there's going to be luck in this game. But it's not too much luck. And the luck over the course of the game should even out if you're playing the game. If you're like, wow, this wiped... Listen. There was somebody who got completely wiped out. It saved their purple crystal crystallite, I guess what it's called. Crystallite is what I kept calling it. Like the drink. And totally got wiped out. And he was like, that's sucks and i was like you know what everybody else sold their purple you held on it trying to play the market and and hopefully you were going to manipulate it and you lost that happens sometimes so it's not a stock market but prices will fluctuate up and down the purple is probably the most volatile one and just got hosed on it, it was a thing where the, all the purple got taken away and you could say, well, if you know that was a deck you could have planned for, but not all the cards, not all the event cards are going to be in the deck for every game. So that card could have been in there and could not have been in there. That's Mule. And you have to be okay with that. If you have to be in control and it has to be a dry euro, which I love, but you have to have every bit of control and no luck can be involved, this is not your game. This is going to be an economic game where things will happen to you and nobody else, and it will crush you or help you. And you will be screwed by it. Or it could help your neighbor win the game. That's Mule. So you have to you have to be okay with that. Put all that aside. Put all that aside. Because the game creates variants that you can do if you're not into that. You can minimize it. Take those events out of the game. And that's fine. The game still works. But I'm big on playing the game as it's written. And then I can tweak it, I guess, later if I want to. But I'm, I'm pretty big on the rules of the rules. That's how they intended. If I don't like this game, then I'll move on to another game. I did like this game. Um, I didn't get, ho I didn't win, 
But I didn't get hosed as bad as some others in our Epic game. Um, I've played this twice, two and a half times already. Um, one game we packed up a little bit early. I like what I see. Um, I do like Euro games, the dry ones, they will. I do like economic games, the dry ones. But this is a fun experience, too. And while you know, I can stand and play with an 8-year-old, um, I could play this with a family of older children who were in this kind of thing and didn't mind a little fluctuation. And you just have to be okay. Now, I played with what they call tournament rules, which is, which is just... Um, the advanced rules, if you will, and they, they were a piece of cake. Um, this is a game I like. I didn't have a game like this in my collection, this kind of heavier economic game, but with the luck involved. I didn't have that. And that's going to, th that gamer, I don't think, is going to line up liking this amount of luck, but it worked for me. And I just, I got to the point where I had to um, go around the lock. When we first started the game, we were like, we listened to um, another reviewer said, don't do this. We ended up sticking with the rules in the book. Um, and it didn't go, we're going to screw this one person all the time, which was nice. And a lot of games, that person would be me. Uh, but in this game, we tended to try to screw people to make deals to get favors later. And um, who was winning and who would have hurt the least and the most at times. So it was kind of interesting. So I did like that. Um, Overall, this is a keeper for me. I think I'm going to keep this game a long time. Like I said, I don't have a game that's this heavy with... This isn't the heaviest game in the world, but it's a heavier economic game or mid, mid to heavy. But it has that luck that lightens it up a tad, okay? Um, you're not going to play this with your grandma. This is going to be a gamer game. Uh, but I liked it. I didn't mind the luck so much. And the luck can pretty much be taken out of it. One thing that was kind of cool when you play the tournament is it has a story mode. So not only is there a winner, but you combine all your scores and it tells you what you did. For example, overall the co colony succeeded, the Federation is pleased by your efforts. Best one. Overall the colony delighted the Federation with the exceptional achievement. Your time will be luxurious. The worst. Overall the colony failed. This is The Federation debtors prison is your next home. These have nothing to do with the game. This isn't a spoiler. It's just based on your score. You can kind of see what happened with the colony overall. But it's not cooperative whatsoever. That's just a little fun bonus at the end of it. Um, I like this game. I'm going to recommend it. I'm going to keep it. You have to be okay with luck. And that's really it was the only downside. You said, like, well, there went that. I got screwed. But it doesn't happen every round. It might happen once if you have bad luck twice in a game. And it can be devastating. Plan for it. That's Mule. Let me show you the components of the game. So, first thing let me show you is the money. It's going to come in lots of different shapes and colors. And so, even the colorblind can be able to see this and kind of make their way through it. And there's numbers on them and different shapes. And they're easy to notice. And they're not paper. These are real hard cardboard. And you get a lot of it. You're going to have... For a lot of these, you're going to have a little token and a five token. Unfortunately, these blue ones I had to sticker myself, which, you know, if you watch any of my videos, you know I despise. But I had to do all of these blues. The other ones, you don't get stickers, which would have been nice if they did, but they don't. And they come in uh, four different colors, and you get the five and the ones. You're also going to get these tiles, which will be represent the land. They're fairly thick and nice and... All the icons you can clearly see. Some of them will have mountains on them, and the icons are pretty good. Uh, very easy, color coded and different, and you can flip them over and see what else is there. Okay. You're going to have the main board. Or, well, let me show you this. So, this is all one board, it's fairly long. This is going to be the planet where you're going to be picking the lands. And this is going to be more of the spreadsheet slash the market that's going on in the game. Everything has the rules clearly stated on here. Color coded, you have the market with the numbers, and then you have turn order over there, which is fairly easy. Everybody's going to get their own player board where you can play your own land. You can see the connections. You're going to be able to store your stuff at the top and what you're used. And then this will be your individual race and power when you put a card on it. And you'll, whatever. And these will be the cards that you'll put over it. 
you can play without any powers. We're going to play symmetrically. Or you can have everybody take one of these that match their their race. I realize that these two don't match. I'm just showing you the card. And we'll have a power. And these are all double-sided. And you have quite a few of these of what you can do. And there's two for each race. So each race will have a red side. And they will also have a blue side. So let me show you the difference in a blue side. This is a humanoid setup. You start with $10 less and without a package from the world. He's an expert species. If you want to use the red side, start with $10 less and without a package from the earth, expert species. So you get two of those. <coughs> And let's see, you're going to have a set of cards that will be events. So this is the end. And the way the game is played, there's four different of these ship is back. We're going to have a different number at the bottom, uh, which will set that market in the last round to be different. You don't know which one will be in the game. And some of the events that can happen is a pirate ship. Colonists lose all of their purple stock, including this turn's production. That can really suck. A pest attack, minus one to all food production values. And then whoever's a rank 2 colonist selects any one of his lands that have produced food this turn. If he has no such lands, 